couple of years ago, some of you guys were asking about potential brake setup for the uh, Tracy O'Brien brakes. And uh, I already had mine all hooked up and everything. But anyway, after a, uh, a rough landing the other night where I uh, blotched and kind of had a little bend in my landing gear, I always said if I ever had it off, I'd make a little quick video. Maybe somebody can find it of use. So uh, uh, here it is. So let's see. Here's the plane with the gear off. Let's see, of course it's Fokker D7. Um, there it is with the gear off. And I'll just, uh, just show you right there. There's the gear off, and of course there's the, the brake line. Okay, so that's kind of how it starts. Okay, and here's the standard brake. Many of you all have seen before. And uh, of course, that's just some L angle that's been fabricated. And that's another piece to be fabricated to allow the, uh, uh, the brakes. Okay, now here's the next step. First thing I do is kind of grease the axle up so this will slide on there. Slide it on to the predetermined point where I want it to be. Uh, you already put, you put your wheel on, you test that because what you have to do is you have to drill a hole all the way through the axle, which is this one right here. So all I've done, and for example, here's another uh, let's see, here's another hole, okay? So, let me go, sh yeah, so, all I've done since the last little video was I slid this into the right place, ran this bolt through, tightened it up, and then the clamp nut that you saw f hanging out there that holds this whole thing, I tightened that up as well. So, that's where we are so far. Okay, here's where we are now. Now that you've got this mounted to the axle, you've got to come up with spacers and you've got to know how much the spacers uh, are. And by the way, I got this piece here and the little clamp thing there fabricated and some of the other pieces from Chuck's Hair Repair in Oklahoma. I think he charged me a hundred bucks. Anyway, you need spacers in here. That way when you slide the wheel on and the wheel is in there in place, there's no room for it to, to slide in and out and you want it in a firm place. So you have to know how much. So anyway, this is just a brass spacer with Dremel slashes on there. That's to spin the grease and keep the grease in place. Okay, so that'll go on there. And then these other washers, I just got them from uh, Fastenal. And you just lather them up with grease and then you put a little slashes in them with a Dremel blade. Uh, and again, that just kind of keeps the grease spinning in, instead of stagnant. So the next thing is put the spacers on there. Okay, so now I got the brass spacer and a couple of Fastenal spacers. Uh, kind of hit the uh, grease yet again. So there we go. Okay. So now I got the, uh, here's the wheel with the uh, Tracy O'Brien shell. Notice the uh, screw heads are flush and there's spacers on the other side of the mount. Again, I got that from Chuck's Air Repair. Then I'm just going to simply slide this on, push it up all the way. I just slid it all, all the way up in place and uh, of course it's jacked up. Notice it's spinning, and this is as far this way as I want it to go because of those spacers. And then, of course, I've got another spacer that I'll bolt in place over here. But uh, what I've found right here is you don't want it to go all the way because then the brakes will ride up in here. What I found is if you get it to where the lip of this thing is flush with that, that's how many spacers you need. Okay, now I've put the uh, spacer and the bolt on through on this side. Uh, only two more quick things to do. First is I just put that in there, and then I'm gonna, while it's jacked up, I'm gonna run the bungee on both sides and secure that, and then move on to the next wheel. Okay, there's something I wanted to show you. Uh, <clears throat> Right here, this arm, I had to bend it out instead of being straight. 
out, I had to bend it about 20 degrees in so that the geometry would set up from, from this, let's see here, from this to go pretty much close to straight down. Then, let's see, the next thing I wanted to mention is if I pulled this ball out, this arm would go down about another quarter inch. And what I found is when I activate the brakes, the first quarter inch up, the shoe inside here is not touching. So about a quarter of an inch up, this is almost touching here. And that way when I touch the brakes inside, I don't have to get almost full brake uh, extension before I feel the brakes. At least this way, having this arm activated about a quarter of an inch, seems to me as soon as I start pushing the brakes, I can start feeling it slow down a little bit. So, there you go. Okay, time for the bungee. Now what I do just simply is a little loop with safety wire here. And then the key to me here is to pre-tighten it. So every time you do a loop over and under, you're yanking and pulling as hard as you can. Because I tried doing it just snug at first, and that doesn't last for squat. So as long as you keep it pre-tightened, I mean, you really pull hard, and then you do a couple over and under, and you tie it, and then uh, uh, your final one, you just safety wire it, or you... Uh, uh, use some uh, some of these right here but uh, so here goes one well, one quick point here I wanted to mention normally I used to have uh, I've got like a washer on this side here you can see that big fastenal washer I used to have one here and then I just ran the bungees from here up and over and over and around and back and over like that the problem is is there was no place for the gear uh, as you would bounce. So I'm trying to experiment here by moving this out of the way because if you've got a stuck bungee here that's keeping it from moving, then there's no spring, uh, if you understand what I'm saying there. So I'm in the process of trying an experiment that my airport manager said, which is to move it over here, so that way there's nothing to possibly stick up in here and feed and get stuck. And another thing while I'm sitting here is you, you might wonder what this is. That's an anti-rotation thing. I just welded that on. Usually it, it initially was clamped. Let's see if that's a better picture. It was clamped when I got it from Chuck's Air Repair. But it comes up here and it allows when the brakes are active to stop the rotation of the axle. And then this is just a steel rod going back to the uh, landing gear. So all the whole purpose of this is to keep it from to keep it from rotating. Okay, there it is, bungee. And again, every wrap, every wrap around, you pull it tight, kind of crisscross every now and then. And I just sealed the last one off here with uh, with a uh, little twist tie. And uh, while I'm at it, I showed you the anti-rotation set up there two steel bars but then here's a good a good way to see um, here's the Tracy O'Brien whatever that's called and then here's the spacers that, that are required and I got those from uh, Chuck's Air Repair it's like I'm gonna smidge of rust there but anyway uh, that gives a good uh, a good look at that there so I believe I'm done, and all I need to do now is just, uh, just let it down. Okay, there it is, completed. As you can see, one uh, final tip here. Any structural, structural engineer will tell you that true strength comes from outer diameter, and uh, this two things this axle this gear axle here is not standard I got this longer it's uh, actually six feet long which is longer than Robert's so you'd have room to do stuff over here and I found that the wider wheelbase does help the ground handling but what I've done is I've got uh, a 
that inter inner axle there, what that is is I welded three collars, they're like two inch wide collars on top of the existing axle. And then that gave it a little bit of diameter, diameter because here's the end of it right there. So it's just kind of an in, in the middle. And um, so then it goes all the way over to right over at that spot there. All it's designed to do is to provide strength in the, uh, in the middle of the axle because everybody that you typically see flying these, there's, it's a big U-shaped bow. And uh, until I did this, that makes it a little bit heavier, but it provides the strength. So again, that's the stock axle a little bit. It's six inches longer, I believe, or eight inches longer. But uh, there's a collar here, one in the middle and one on the far side. And that allowed me to get an even bigger diameter steel 4130. It's uh, 1 16th inch wide. And uh, just weld it, rosette welding across the way. And haven't had any problems since. So hopefully you find this of use.